very much. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so just to get started, I guess our first question that we want to throw out to you is we were talking a little bit before the break about poverty and some of the challenges that come along with that. I mean, you don't, I know that you've been involved with championing uh, some of the problems that come along with that through your work with your American organization. You guys do a, on a variety of levels, so if you would just let our viewing audience that doesn't know what that is about. Well, American was created because of the violence in this country, particularly among uh, Latinos and African Americans. And Mr. Farrakhan came to Los Angeles and he had a program called Stop the Killing. That night he brought about 50 gang members to my house who had been warring with each other. And uh, there were tears and uh, it was amazing that uh, these young men wanted to change their life. Mm -hmm. And I always say young men, but women always get upset. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is the men, not the women. So uh, there are, so, but there, there are some women gangbangers. There are too, some right? women gangbangers, <laughs> but the lightweight. They're influenced by the men. Right, right. What I realized is that a lot of these young men wanted to change their lives, didn't know how, and they were caught up in this whole thing of uh, machoism. And so I continued the meetings, and out of that we developed a educational curriculum, which uh, was based on the fundamentals of how to be successful. And when you are working on being successful, your self-esteem come up, comes up. And I always found that self-esteem was at the bottom of everything, a lack of self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So the combination of education and stopping the violence became Americans' uh, kind of call and cry. And we're all over the country now. And a lot of young people have changed their lives around. They're doing very well. Yes. And uh, that's American. How long? How long has American uh, been operational? Well, I would say since 1988. Mm -hmm. 1988. It's a long time, and it takes a long time. Yes. The journey is uh, not the destination. It is the journey, not the destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, time doesn't matter as such. You have to change your culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to say this off the top. The problem is really that in the African-American community, we don't take control of our community. We don't make it safe. We don't make it loving. We don't make the family thing, uh, uh, you know, our mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't let the economics come in the proper way. Right. And then we cry the blues. Mm -hmm. But how can you imagine young men killing each other? you know, having their mothers suffer, their children suffer, mm -hmm. and the African male not being a father in his own community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these things are almost uh, unheard of, but that's the cause of the big problem that we have with African Americans in this country today. Yes. <clears throat> well, you heard earlier we were talking, uh, AJ and I were talking about uh, poverty and its correlation uh, with crime. Uh, has it been uh, your finding throughout your work that uh, the reason uh, young African Americans are finding themselves getting into trouble uh, in terms of crime is uh, directly correlated with uh, the fact that uh, they're impoverished or uh, they, they just live in poor communities? That's really a, a ticklish question, mm -hmm. but I'm going to give you a direct answer. In Los Angeles, there's a middle class uh, area and the gangs, the gang that comes out of that area are the rolling 60s. Mm -hmm. And they're not poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. they're educated, they got money, and they got class. Right. But they're killers. Right. And so there goes the reason of poverty. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the no, most notorious, probably the most notorious gang. Well, it's being, they're being turned around now because Big Hugh is back out of jail and he's doing a tremendous job. I mm -hmm. just have to shout out to Big Hugh, man. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of meeting Big Hugh and he's an extraordinary gentleman. He really Absolutely. is. And thank God, you know, for those kind of young men. Big Rock is also back from doing a job in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. He was training some juvenile delinquents there. So you have the good things. But uh, poverty is going to affect everything. Mm -hmm. Crime is definitely going to go up because when people can't eat... They they're take. Gonna, they're going to take. Right. They're going to do something. Drugs are going to be sold. Absolutely. And you find out that, I mean, gangs turn on each other. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Latino gangs find that they're being jacked mm-hmm. by African American gangs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, poverty and uh, the fact that people do not have uh, their self-esteem when they're in a power in poverty state uh, has a whole lot to do with the murder that goes on, the mm-hmm. robbery that goes on, mm-hmm. and uh, so. But it isn't the only reason. So I don't want to put that out there. Absolutely. But it does play a major part. We know that. Um uh, back a, a few decades ago, you were involved and very instrumental in creating something called the Black Economic Union that in a different way was to begin to start getting the leaders of our African-American community together to take responsibility for the community. Um, would you say something about how that came into being and what that process was like? Well, if you analyze the African-American community and the the habits that we put forth, we're the only community that doesn't really take care of itself. Uh, We own a community that other people come in and set up shop, Mm -hmm. take our money to other communities and build up their communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Black Economic Union was an organization created so that black people would have an opportunity to become uh, entrepreneurs. Right. Uh, They could get uh, loans, the reasonable uh, interest rate. They could, uh, we had a national business planning team. They can get the expertise from these MBAs and uh, they could become real business people. Mm -hmm. And we affected over 400 black businesses in this country. Now, the unique thing about the Black Economic Union is that we used the top black athletes because they had the money Mm -hmm. and then they had the fame so they could influence people. Mm -hmm. Then we used some of the top black MBAs from the best schools in the country. My number one guy was a graduate of Harvard, magna cum laude, Spencer Jardine, uh, John Wooten, Colorado, mm-hmm. Dean Buchanan, Princeton. Mm-hmm. So you put the brains and the notoriety and the money together, and then you can create the economics properly. What was the response when you were uh, put, putting together this organization, the Black Economic Union, uh, in terms of the individuals who have... Uh, possibly have come from uh, poor beginnings and a meager background and eventually became successful through sports, through entertainment, what have you, through business. Uh, What was the response from them when you would go and ask them to be involved in something like this? Well, fortunately, uh, during those days, uh, most of us understood education Mm -hmm. because discrimination was overt. Mm. I mean, you were black, man, you were on the outside. Mm And so education became so important, and we utilized our education to the T. Mm -hmm. All of our guys graduated. I don't know how many athletes graduate today. Mm -hmm. And we took pride in that. Because when I said Spencer was from Harvard, Harvard was probably the number one school in the country. And we're very, very proud of that. And so the intelligence that we Mm utilized was at the forefront of everything. Mm-hmm. In other words, why should we victimize our own community? Why don't we bring something to our community? Why don't we use the fact that we have fame? Why don't we use the fact that we have money? Mm-hmm. And we did. We put all of those things into play coming out of that 400 black businesses. Yes. Earth, wind, and fire. Mm-hmm. Right here in uh, 